Hey there, if you're wondering about selling your home while living in Orange County, today's episode is for you. If you're wondering how to increase the selling price of my home, we're going to talk about three things. One, staging and repairs to increase the selling price. Two, how to make your house stand out when selling it. Three, what are the common pitfalls when selling your house? Plus a few other insider secrets every home seller needs to know that you may not have heard before. Stay with me till the end for one of today's real estate crazy, stupid, silly stories. It's the favorite part of what I do and you're gonna love it. Now let's get started. Okay, let me switch over here to my laptop. If you are thinking of selling your home, we're talking about the questions to ask before putting your home on the market so that you can put the most do re me in your pocket when you sell your home. And here we go. Okay, today we're looking at how to increase the selling price of my home so you can make the most money. And tip number one, staging and repairs to increase the selling price because these two strategies are what will make your house stand out. When I hear questions around the topic of how to increase the selling price of my home, I know that a good agent will suggest professional staging and photography. And for the clients I work with, this is sage advice. Now look at the photograph here on the screen a little differently than you might normally would. You'll notice that the walls and window are both white and psychologically that says clean to the person viewing the photograph. See the purple flowers on the windowsill? That speaks to the idea of fresh. And you'll notice the photographer has, has her hair up. That's a subtle clue that says uplifting. Now, maybe you've never noticed the details of a photograph like this before, but these are the details that matter. And it's the same thing when staging and repairing your home. We're going to talk more about those details in just a minute. All right. Along with a photographer, an agent may even suggest or may even hire an expert copywriter to write ads. And we may do live streams from your house to introduce it to the market and share on social media. Yes, when we are talking about staging and repairs, we're actually talking about marketing. You know, there's an old saying that says marketing is everything we do to prepare for the sale. And this is true in every single industry. So when we peel back the layers on marketing your house, at the very foundation of marketing is doing whatever it takes to get a buyer out from in front of their computer and to the front door of your home. We do this primarily with photography and staging. That's how important it is. We somehow have to get a person from their computer screen to your front door bell, much like we see in the image here. Leave me a comment below if you agree that great photography and great staging can make all the difference in increasing the selling price of your home by getting the person away from their computer and to your front door. All right. Before we look at how to make your house stand out when selling, if this is your first time on the channel and you don't want to miss any tools for first-time home sellers, then take a minute to subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications. This will help people just like you who want the best information as well. On this channel, we talk about how to put the most do re -mi in your pocket when you sell your home. My name is Ramey, like do re -mi. I'm an award-winning designer, a best-selling author, and a top-producing real estate agent who's worked across four states. My team and I get calls every single day from people asking how to sell my house more quickly, and we love hearing from you. Whether you're looking to sell your house and move tomorrow or somewhere down the road, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call. We would love to hear from you, and those links are below. Okay, today we're looking at how to increase the selling price of my home. Let's go over some of the tricks of the trade to help you increase the selling price of your home so you can put more do re -mi in your pocket. And the first little tip here is that details matter. Don't leave dishes in the sink. Keep the bathroom ready for show, which means putting away all personal to toiletries, personal items of any kind, putting out guest towels in the kitchen and the bath. Now here in this image, can you see the splash of color on the bar stools? We'll talk more about these color details in a minute. These details matter, and it's always the first thing I tell my clients that I'm working with. Also, make sure that the buyers can see the baseboards by removing all clutter. This makes the house seem more spacious. And make sure there are no dust bunnies. Okay, and here comes the next trick of the trade. <laughs> I seriously, talking of dust bunnies, I showed a house one time and the sellers had two German shepherds 
beautiful dogs. And my buyers were dog lovers, but the dust bunnies inside the house, ay, 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 those dust bunnies were everywhere. And ee, sorry, but there were a few poops that needed to be scooped out in the backyard. Okay, details matter even to dog lovers. Now let's move on to the next trick. The rule of one third, you know, we've talked before about decluttering, but I'm often asked about how much decluttering to do. Would it surprise you to know that we want to box up a full one third of the home's contents and store all that in the garage or in a storage facility? You know, it's true that personal belongings can make a house feel more homey, but at the same time, buyers can't imagine their own stuff there without a little breathing room. This is the rule of one third. And it's one of those little known secrets that can help you increase the selling price of your home. Plus, when you do it, it'll make you feel amazing to clean a few things out. Leave me a comment below if you are surprised by this trick of decluttering a full one third of the home's contents. Okay, here comes the next trick of the trade. This is all about the doggy daycare. Now, I know that I'm going to ruffle a little fur with this one, but my suggestion is that if you have animals, then consider limiting the showings of your home to only one or two days a week. And here's what I mean by that. I normally say that one of the top three reasons a house doesn't sell is because nobody can get into it. And this is why we use lockboxes so that buyers can gain access on their schedule with their own agent. But if you have animals, then we might want to look at a different strategy. If you have animals, if you limit your showings to only Saturday all day and then maybe one evening during the week, then you can send the dogs to doggy daycare and send the cats to a pet motel. I've had potential buyers see bowls of dog food or toys strewn around, and they've literally said to me, uh-oh, there's probably dog slobber all over everything, you. And if they see litter boxes and things like that, they wonder what else has been peed on. Even the people who have their own pets can be very judgmental if they're under the impression that the house may not be clean. So in this situation, if we compress the showing time to only two windows during the week, not only will you likely get more activity because of this restriction, but you'll only have to worry about your pets during those two times. Easier for you and we're more likely to get a great selling price for your home. All right, our pets matter. Now, let's move on. And the next trick is to lighten up. If I had a nickel for every time a client said to me, I want to find a house that's light and bright, well, I'd probably be a millionaire by now. So for the sellers that I work with, I often suggest that we take down the draperies all together and have the windows professionally cleaned. We might also change out all the lampshades for white shades and get the best, brightest light bulbs that we can. If a buyer feels like your house is light and bright, we have a much better chance of getting top dollar. Okay. Here comes the next trick of the trade. This is the 100% ROI trick. You know, I'm often asked what repair or upgrade brings the best return on investment. And I have only one answer. It's the first impression. And we are talking about curb appeal. I often see a 100% return on power washing, colorful flowers or shrubs, a winding walk, a brightly painted front door, and repairs and updates to the front entryway. Excellent return. These are the some of the color details that matter. You know, it's interesting. Buyers like to name the houses they see, and color is a great way to help them make associations. Remember that image I showed you a while ago with the lime green bar stools? A buyer will actually call that house the house with the lime green bar stools. It's how they remember it. Or the house with the red door like this one. Or the house with the pink and purple flowers on the front porch. All right. So that's curb appeal. Now let's move on. The kitchen is the heart of the home. And when we talk about how to make your house stand out, when selling it, there's an old adage. You aren't selling your house, you're selling your kitchen. Think about that. The fastest, quickest updates and repairs will be paint, fixtures, maybe new counters, because buyers will quickly judge the condition of your home. And if the kitchen looks dated, they think in chunks of $5,000. In other words, if your counters are dated, they take off $5,000 in their mind. If the fixtures are dated, there goes another $5,000, psychologically speaking. If the paint is tired, say bye-bye to another five grand. So to increase the selling price of your home, we may want to think about some basic kitchen upgrades. Okay, here comes the next trick of the trade. Coming out of the closet. <laughs> Remember that one third rule that we talked about a little bit ago? This also applies to each individual closet. Take out one third of every closet's contents. See this image on the screen? 
The closet looks neat and well-organized, but just imagine if it were one-third less full. You'd literally be removing everything right there on that back wall, all the blue shirts and the jackets below. And then everything on the right side could be stretched out a little bit with some leg room. And this goes for the insides of cabinets as well, kitchens, baths, hallways, all the closets and cabinets. Now, if you're an overachiever like me, you'll probably remove one half of everything inside the closets and cabinets. Box it all up, move it to the garage. Buyers want storage, and we want to create the illusion of having lots and lots of storage space. This is one way to do it. And I've saved the best for last. I like to call this the price is right. You know, I have a lot of great pricing strategies that I use with my own clients, and this is one of my favorites. We look at what your home is worth and then knock anywhere from 15 to 20% off. Now, I know that this is cringeworthy, but stay with me here. Even in the worst markets, it's not uncommon to see multiple bids with this strategy. And when that happens, we often end up with more than if we had listed the property at fair value. It takes courage to use this strategy, not going to lie. And most sellers don't have enough courage to risk it. But what I always tell my own clients is that if it doesn't work for some reason, then we'll adjust the price wherever you would like within the next two weeks. But seriously, seriously, this is probably the single best strategy to sell a home. It gets the phone to ring and it gets the most eyeballs on it. And at the end of the day, flushes out the highest and best price. Okay, so today's subject is how to increase the selling price of my home, and I have just one final tip for you, and that is to understand the common pitfalls when selling your house. Understanding the common pitfalls when selling your house, this is a little bit of a tricky area, and I'll tell you why. With thousands and potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line when selling your home, this is a question for your own agent who has eyes on your specific property. You want an agent who will be honest with you. Ask them to honestly point out any potential mistakes or pitfalls uh, that you can avoid where your property is concerned. Try to set your emotions aside. Yes, we love the quirky front door lock that never works and everyone jokes about it when they say, oh, thank goodness it's a safe neighborhood because this door never locks. But joking aside, if your agent suggests correcting something that might turn buyers off, listen to them. We don't want to fall down the rabbit hole and then wonder, why the house hasn't sold. The good agents are out in the field every single day hearing the buyer comments about what they like and what they don't like. Your agent can look at your property through a buyer's eyes and know exactly what the pitfalls might be for your own house. And this is a beautiful opportunity to listen. All right. In each of these episodes, I have promised to share with you the lighter side of real estate by featuring one of our real estate, crazy, stupid, silly stories. These stories are my favorite part of real estate. And so what do we have for today? Uh oh, let me grab it. Hang on. This one is from Jennifer in Tampa. And she says, my very first closing was a short sale. Um, that's a foreclosure in case you didn't know. She says, I was representing the buyers. This short sale had attorneys involved. The buyers had an attorney, the sellers had an attorney, and then there were the bank attorneys. But wait, there's more. They also had to involve the divorce attorney for the sellers, who then had to involve a defense attorney, who then had to involve the seller's prison warden to allow the title company to verify two simple questions. <laughs> It was a ch daisy chain of details, but see, we've been talking about that today, how important the details are. Each one of these details depended on the other. Well, today we were talking about how to increase the price of your home, and just remember to always be willing to increase the patience that it sometimes takes <laughs> to get a house sold. Okay, let's move on. Remember, whether you're looking to sell your house and move tomorrow or next year or somewhere down the road, you can give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email, we'll talk about how to put the most Do-Re-Mi in your pocket. When we see each other, you can ask about the three options for getting more Do-Re-Mi from the sale of your home. I call these the three Do-Re-Mi options. One of these will be just right for you, and the other two, they won't be a fit. I would love to go over these with you in person. Thanks for watching. Be sure and check the description box below for any free giveaways, and I look forward to chatting with you soon.